when you first come to the clock, it could be in one of two states. First state is it's showing the day, and the time of day, and it has a bunch of game information on there. To get out of this state and into a new game, you go to the menu options, press up to get to select time of day, and then press left or right until it shows the menu that says game or time of day. At that point, you'll press the one key and it'll start a game. Here it'll ask you, do you want a new game? And generally, the answer to that will be yes. And doing that, it'll clear all the information. To who the yes key, you hit enter. And now you're, 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 the clock now shows the time of day. The clock has been changed to show 15 minutes, no score, first period, and everything. So as if you just started a game. You're about to start your game. At this point, unless your time is, you, you'll probably need to change the clock to set a warm-up time. Usually most warm-up time is about five minutes, but this, you set the clock no matter how much time you want to put on the clock, it all is set the same way. So the, what you do is go to the set main clock button, press that, now you enter the time in minutes and seconds, and tenths of seconds. So say I want to set a five minute uh, warm-up time, I would enter five zero zero zero. That gives you, as you can see on the clock, five minutes. And you hit enter or yes, and the clock now has changed to five minutes. At this point, if you want to do warm-up, you should hit start. The clock would start running down and it it'd keep running until it gets to the five minutes and the horn would go off. In general, the horn will go off automatically. It will sound for a little bit and not. If not, you can always stop it with the stop button that stops everything. So, say our five minutes. At this point, the clock is running. Um, it start and stop are the buttons you can press to start it, stop it, start it. Um, on some of the on the clock at Kings, on the main clocks, the main uh, arena clocks, there's a remote control stop start. That one will stop. You flick the switch left and right, and it'll stop and start the clock. When the period runs out, the horn goes off and the clock stops automatically even though the remote is still in start mode. At that point you need to remember to um, either turn it to stop before the period starts or when you start the next period you hit start and then everything will start rolling. You'll get the hang of that after in no time at all. So say this is run all the way off um, and the periods over, the warm-ups are over, it's time to start the game. At this point you just go set the clock again. Set the main clock, 12 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever your uh, your age group has for each period, that's what you use to set the main clock. So now you're ready to go at the beginning of the period. At this point, you'd um, using the remote, you can start the clock. If it's already on stop, you hit start and it'll start. If the remote is on start because you didn't change it from the previous period, you can click stop and back to start, or you can hit the start key on the front. The next thing you need to know about uh, generally in the game will probably be shots on goal. To do it, shots on goal are rather simple. You need to remember which team, home team or guest team. Obviously, in the second period, the team switched sides, so you generally can't use that to tell which side of the um, of the clock to press it on. But the home section is all over here on the left, and the guest section is all over here on the right. This controls all the things that that team will do. You'll set for that team during the game. If the home team gets a shot on goal, well, it's very simple. There's shots on goal keys. Plus one increases the shots. Minus one decreases the shots in case you put it on the wrong side. Same for guests. Every shot on goal, just pump it up one. It's nice and easy. The clock will show you the combined amounts for the whole game. Um, it keeps increasing or decreasing, you know, depending on what you do with the buttons. Very simple. Keep shots on goal. It's good. It's a very good practice when you're doing a score sheet to keep shots on goal. Coaches love that. Um, it's always disappointing when you get a score sheet from another organization that the teams didn't keep shots on goal. The goalies, parents like that kind of information. Coaches love to know what happened. You know, of course, that's still you know up to interpretation. You know, your job to figure out whether you thought it was a shot on goal or not a shot. But the clock keeping track it's very easy. Um, none of the clocks we have show saves, so there's no point in really putting that, in increasing and decreasing that. And actually, shit saves are just however many shots on goal minus the ones that went in, so there's not really a need to keep saves in here either. 
Um, the next thing you probably have to worry about is that some of, some of those chances, those shots on goal, will actually go in. At that point, you'll need to give the team a score. Well, that's real simple. Score plus one for the home score, score minus one for the home score. Those are the same thing. It just goes up or down depending on how you press it. You don't need to worry about setting it individually, you know, setting three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. You just do plus, plus, minus, minus to keep that score in line. Put it on the wrong side, subtract from one side, put it on the other side, no big deal. Now, say time has run all the way down and the period runs out. A good thing to do at the end of the period is to write down the number of shots that happened in that period, right? If it's the end of the first period, you look at the board and it's whatever's on the board. You write that on your score sheet. If it's the second period, obviously, you subtract what's on the score sheet from what's on the board and so on. It's a very, very you know, simple system. Um, keep track of what goalies go in so you can try and keep those for the correct goalie. Uh, the next thing you do, obviously, is adjust the period. So now from the first period, it's now period number two. We just added one to it. At the end of the second, period number three. Every time when you do a new game, you'll, this will get set back to zero. So if you goof up during the game, you can just keep going and get all the way back around to one again. Um, Um, one thing you might find is sometimes somebody has been playing with the clock when you get there and it's not in hockey mode. If that's the case, if it's in basketball mode or some strange football mode or something like that, to get it into hockey, you end up setting it, um, setting code 4402. To do that, you do menu, go down and ask for new code, you hit yes, you enter 4402 because that's probably not what's going to be there when you get there because it some kid has been playing with it at public skate or something and it's all hit or enter. And now we're back into full mode, hockey mode. See, 15 minutes start time. If you hit player penalty, two minutes. So everything's set. Um, that's the basics of running the clock. It's very easy. The most important part is just paying attention to what's going on, entering the penalties as they come in, get the player number, enter the time. Just take a look at the screens. Very helpful. Um, Everything's right there in front of you. The hardest part is making sure when you delete penalties that you delete the one that needs to come off first.